Two summers ago, Carolina had a quarterback battle between Jacoby Criswell and some dude named Drake May. And we all know how that one turned out. Question now, who's going to be QB1 this time around? You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, what's up? It's Wednesday, April 17th, 2024. Welcome into the Locked On Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shea, joined today by our guy, Denora Searcy. It's great to be together. You're joining us at The Place to get your Tar Heels content every single day. Thanks for making us your first listen or watch, and a big shout out. To all you everydayers out there, as well as all the members of the Locked on Tar Heels Discord community. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on College for $20 off your first purchase. All right, folks, coming up today, I want to let you know a couple things. It is Wednesday. We actually have two shows for you today. So this one where we're talking football, unpacking the, the practice from Saturday. Uh, but also bas- more basketball content as the uh, whirlwind continues of trying to figure out who is going to be the Armando Baycott replacement next year, some updates on the Kate Tyson recruitment, all of that. So make sure you check that show out as well. As for this show, between Denoris and I, we're going to take a look at the quarterback room. We're going to take a look at the defensive back room. And then uh, Cerse is going to have some just general observations for us from what he saw Saturday as he was there at Keenan in person. Also, a couple upcoming football events I just want to make you aware of that came out from the football office um, to the email inbox on Tuesday. Number one, today, Wednesday at 11 a.m. might, in fact, be already have happened uh, if you're listening to this or watching it later in the day. Coach Mac Brown will have a pre-spring game press conference on Saturday, obviously, is the spring game. There will be a couple... Um, post-game uh, uh, players that we will get press conferences from. And then on Monday, Monday, Coach Brown will do a post-spring uh, practice wrap-up press conference at 1 p.m. And then we'll also get Brian Simmons, uh, who is the new NFL liaison for the football team after Coach Brown. So just a couple things to be aware of moving forward. Sirs, I asked you, All right, brother, tell me what did you see Saturday? What do you want to talk about? And you said, Isaac, I saw two rooms that I think are really, really going to be competitive this year. Number one, the quarterback room, and number two, the defensive back room. And so that's where we're going with the first two segments of today. Obviously, uh, we're just a couple weeks away from the draft. We all expect Drake May to go very, very, very high in that draft. And unfortunately, that means that Carolina is going to have to replace him. It's the wildest thing. If somebody leaves, uh, somebody else has to fill his shoes. I don't know if you know that that's how it works, but that's what we're doing. So right now, Carolina, uh, after some movement on Tuesday, by the way, and we'll get to that in a minute, has four quarterbacks on the roster right now. Two true freshmen early enrollees, DJ Mazzoni and Michael Merdinger. But then also the two guys we expect to compete for the job. That's redshirt sophomore Connor Harrell, who has uh, started for the first time ever in the bowl game last year against West Virginia. And then also Max Johnson, who transfers in from Texas A&M. So, sirs, as you look at this quarterback room, why do you say to me, Isaac, this room looks competitive? Um, just from observation this Saturday, they, they um, Connor and Max were both showing great leadership and poise, taking command of the offenses when they was out there. Um, Connor is a guy who has been in the system going on two years now. Um, he got he got to sit behind Drake and learn. Um, I seen that he he did get in a few games this past season, which was, which is good for him to gain that experience and the game and that that knowledge and the trust of his, uh, his teammates that was out there with him. And then getting started in the bowl game, um, he did pretty did, did pretty good. Obviously, we didn't get we didn't get the win, but it's, it was great growing pains for him. Um, with Max coming in, he's a guy who's played in the SEC, so he's seen top levels of competition from all all forms. Um, but it should trans it should translate over uh, real good with the offense. Um, like I said, they they were both out there leading. They made some um, impressive throws um, during during the practice Saturday, and they did a good job getting rid of the ball, not forcing anything to cause turnovers. So. Um, it's going to be pretty good coming up in here in, in in the fall camp, man. Just, just I, I just can't wait to see it. Whoever, whoever wins that job, I just hope they do a good. I just do hope they do great for the university. 
And and obviously, sir, in this practice on Saturday where it's being filmed for all access and where you're getting ready for your spring game, you don't want to put really anything on film that your opponents can look at and and get into. I mean, that's just the, the common sense we have with these preseason types of things. But there are some things that we can see and learn and take away. And so as you start to look at this quarterback battle, um, you know, I, I mean, I think back to, to two years ago where we didn't know until game week, you might have known as being someone more on the inside, but the rest of us didn't know whether it would be J- uh, Drake or Jacoby until literally game week ahead of the FAMU game. And so, Denoris, as you look at this thing, what are some of the, the key signs to be watching for in terms of how Coach Brown and the rest of the staff will go about making this decision? Uh, I would say it was who who commands who commands the leadership role more who uh, who shows the great po- great poise who the, who does other guys look to on a daily basis to make mm-hmm. make those typical plays that that get you over the edge and get you over the hump per se to win um, that was the case with uh, Drake and Jacoby you would see more guys gravitate towards Drake and um, you know, stay behind practice and, and play catch with Drake and just just be around him he was he was. Um, from what I've seen, he was a more team guy, locker room guy. He hung out with guys in the player lounge, uh, very competitive. He would play pickup games with guys and ping pong <laughs> and whatever. He, he hated to lose. So guys gravitate towards that. You want to be with a guy that's always going to put it on the line for, uh, to get the win. Um, so, so Connor has – I believe Connor has a little edge on that because he's been around the guys going on three years now. So the guys know him more so than they would they would Max, who just got there um, after, the bowl, after the bowl week. Um, but they also know that Max has in-game experience. So, and like I said, playing against the the defenses in the SEC is is a is a tough task. Um, everybody knows that. Um, so we just just want to see who can continue to be that proven leader and who can make the consistent the consistent growth to be that starter come um, week one. And and it's interesting because. Like it's almost easier if it's two guys that are pretty similar, whether it's like more pro style quarterback or more, uh, you know, dual threat, whatever it may be. And with these two guys, you you get two kind of different skill sets or what you expect of them. With with uh, Max Johnson, he's more kind of that prototypical six five, two twenty five kind of size. Where with Connor, you know, a little bit smaller, but a little bit shiftier and the arm and all that stuff. So d- does that make it harder? for a, a coaching staff to evaluate, you know, knowing that we're going to kind of approach it maybe a little bit different depending on who's the guy under center. Um, not necessarily. Now, well, yeah, with, with Connor being a little bit smaller, a little bit more agile, he's he's maybe able to get out of out of trouble more, more so with his legs. But that's not saying that Max can't run when he needs to run as well. True. So at the end of the day, it's going to come down with um, who can you rely on the most? Who 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 are you going to rely on to get the job done week in and week out? And whoever can show that consistent poise to make plays when we need big plays to be made and to keep the ball out of harm's way, you no know, turnovers and whatnot, and give our guys on the outside a chance to uh, make plays with the ball in yep. their hand, yeah. that's all that matters. What's going to help both of them greatly is the uh, O-line and having uh, Mari and Hampton back. <laughs> so um, to, to break so to break them in or, or to get them to get them to QBs get in the groove it's it's no it's it's not that uh it's not that um what's the what's the word I'm looking for it's not that complicated just turn around and give it to a market <laughs> when you need to you know uh, I said he made some runs in practice uh, he he looks good man he looks already in mid season form and, and it's just spring ball so having that guy behind you with that with that with that big front old line man it's, it's going to help. That is a big encouragement, yes, and is going to go a long way towards success for whichever of these guys wins that job is knowing that you've got a potential first-team All-American in the backfield behind you in yeah, Big O. So uh, we'll keep our eyes on that. Now, Sirs, we're going to obviously talk about this quarterback back and forth all summer long. It's going to be a thing. As you look at it today, you know, mid-April, if you had to look ahead, cards on the table, who would you – kind of expect to have the edge is it connor as you said who's been in the program a little bit longer or is it max with his more in-game experience if you had to make a call today who is under center mm-hmm. week one if i had to make a call today i would go with connor because connor is his i believe is his second year in the system so um I, I feel like he would have a better grasp of it 
Um, but I will also like not necessarily keep him on a short leash, but just see how he does in the first right. few weeks of the season. You could have said uh, like if we got to go, if we had to, if we had to play this Saturday coming up, I would go with Connor. Just, just that's a great way to that's a great way to put right. it. Right. If we had to, right, if we had to play Saturday, Connor, I would, I would give the job to Connor. Not necessarily give it to him, but I would allow him to take reins of it because he has more knowledge of it. And the guys have been with him and have thrown with him. He he knows the guys that are around him a little bit better than Max may may do. So. I would I would I would uh give the edge to Connor to start off. But if, if we had to make a change coming up uh throughout the season, I would be comfortable with putting Max in because Max has the uh, in game experience as well. Yeah. And uh, at least one of those uh receivers has a little more experience with Mr. Johnson, may have grown up in the same household, so we'll keep our eyes on that as well. Sir, one other thing I wanna ask you about is um, unfortunately, one of the guys that's part of this competitive quarterback room we learned on Tuesday is unfortunately transferring out of the program. Uh, is this just kind of the lay of the land in this day and age that, that we just got to get used to? Uh, I would I would say so. When you, when you expect to gain a few more reps and you got guys coming in through the, through the portal and you got more incoming freshmen coming in and you see your opportunities at, at playing and getting the reps in, they kind of dwindle and slip away. Um, yeah, I mean, you want to, you want to, you work, you work your butt off all this time growing up to get on that level to play. And if you see the opportunity is not there for you to play when you feel like you're ready or you, or you know, you want to play like, cause everybody's the guy coming from their school. That's right. Everybody's the guy. So you're not, you're not, you don't want, you're not used to sitting the bench and looking. So if you want to go somewhere where you have a chance to play and showcase your ability, then Nine out of ten guys today are going to take it. Like there's not, there's no point of me sitting on the bench for three, four years and That's not right. being able to play. If I can go somewhere and have a better opportunity to play and and, uh, and produce, then I, I will take it as well. Okay. Well, unfortunately, that was the news on Tuesday that t- Tad, I almost said Tud Hudson, Tad Hudson is out the door to the transfer portal. Um, and and if you saw his social media post, folks, it's nothing but love for the Tar Heels and is exactly what Serge just said. This is all about like, I just want an opportunity to go somewhere and find some on-field reps. And so uh, like whether it's football or basketball or other sports in this transfer portal age, you get it and you understand it and no, no uh, ill will, totally warm wishes for Tad on the out, out the door and, and hopefully he can Absolutely. find a great landing spot. Now, Absolutely. we also said – or as, as Sir said, it ain't just this quarterback room that's competitive. It's this D back room, the secondary that my man might know just a thing or two about himself. So we want to get into looking at it. Why is this defensive back room so um, going to going to have so much competition in it? Who are the guys that are going to make it up, and what are we looking to see? We'll unpack all that in just a second. Right after I tell you about Monopoly Go. Look, I've been told I'm a competitive person, although I'm not the one of us here who was a professional athlete, so I think I might have to defer to Sirs on that one. But let's be honest, it's true. I, too, have a strong competitive side. We all do. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. A great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing with your friends. You can charge them rent on any of the iconic Monopoly properties, just like classic Monopoly. But now you can also rob their vaults of riches for yourself. And the leaderboards show you who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. And it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people from all over the world in timed tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or the Google Play Store. All right, we're going to move from the offensive side of the football to the defensive backfield. The guys trying to pick off uh, any of the opposing quarterbacks and uh, have some PBUs and stuff like that. But, um, Sirs, before we even get into personnel, just want to, you know, I think everyone the past two years has been used uh, to this 4 2 5 personnel of Gene Chizik, where you got five guys in the secondary at any given time. Um, just as we start thinking about the personnel that will be on the field now, should we still expect to see five? Will we uh, expect to see different formations? What, what, what are you thinking on that? Um, I'm 
I believe you still see four two five. I mean, it's a very popular defense in today's game with the with the um, the version of the spread offense. Now you have more receivers and and tight ends who can stretch the field. So you need more guys who can match up and cover and play in space. So I believe that's a popular defense that's not going anywhere. Yeah, um, you even see certain NFL defenses go to it from time to time. So it's 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 something that it, it works. It's, it's proven it works because uh, Alabama ran it for a number of years when they was rallying off uh, national cha- national championships and whatnot. Uh, who else? Clemson ran it when they the two times they won the uh, the playoff championship. So it's it's a very popular defense that works if you have the right guys in place that could, that you could build build around and um, and get the job done. It's it's it's, it's scheme driven and it's and it's player personnel wise driven. So. Yeah, I believe I believe it works. It's, it's just defense that's going that's gonna to be around for a good minute. So there's the question. You just said it. You got to have the dudes. Does Carolina have Absolutely. the dudes? I believe so. We got three. We got three uh, guys that's coming back uh, with Huzzy and Marcus Allen. Um, we got Boykins returning off injuries, um, so he, he's looking to be back, and especially at that that nickel role, um, which would allow I believe Huzzy to play outside more. Um, to be a true lockdown corner, you got Marcus on the other side with the with the the, the size and the length to cover like taller receivers. Um, the thing that's going to be the th- uh, the problem we have to feel, I believe, will be safety because we lost two safeties this past year: Geo Biggers and uh, John Chapman. It yep. was two good guys with with plenty of um, leadership and experience back there. I think they both were fifth year seniors that that played for a very long time to play a, a number of high value snaps. Uh, but we have Will Hardy, who's returning, who 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 got plenty of playing time and made plays out there, and uh, Stig Lane, who who was at Georgia State, who was who was a guy that um, uh, a big guy, uh, not 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 a big guy, but he he's not afraid to come up and hit and make contact. Um, then we have a few uh, we have a few newcomers like uh, Zaya Ferguson. I seen him uh, incoming freshman out of Atlanta. Yeah. Yep. He, he made some good plays uh, in one on ones. Uh, this past Saturday, then we got the, I believe this, the the uh, the safety transfer for NC State. I think it's Jaquin. He was looking good as well at, at practice. So we have we have a number of guys. It's going to be who whose coach is going to be comfortable with putting back there. Like I said, we already got uh, three three for sure that that's good that can man the uh, two that can man the outside and Borkins can be there. But you never know with with the duration of the season. You need more guys that that can plug in and come in and play. Um, what I would tell the guys is, if you're young, uh, if I'm a, if I'm a corner, I'm learning both corners and I'm learning nickel. If I'm a safety, I'm learning uh, both safety spots and nickel, so I can so I can play more. It's it's the more you know, the more opportunities you get to be on the field, the more you can showcase your talent. So um, that's what that's why I was that's why I would leave it at at that. But the competition in the room is great because you got guys that's willing to learn. Um, they learn it off each other. They, they, uh, the older guys who've been in the scheme going on three years now, they teaching, teaching the younger guys. Um, they get to see Ty Adams as much last year as he was nursing a wrist injury, but he was out there making play Saturday, which was good to see. Um, of course, the other guys like Reggie, Reggie Love and Jaden Patterson and Malcolm Ziegler, they have those guys who was out there as well, putting in, putting in work and getting good quality reps. So, Hopefully their reps continue to grow. I know they they have practice today and they have another practice on Thursday before the spring showcase. So looking forward to see what those guys get to do in the spring game once they get turned loose by the uh, coaching staff and whatnot. And you know, sir, you just talked about multiple names there, not just the five dudes that are going to be at the top of the depth chart that are going to be on the field first, but but all these guys who are going to provide that depth beyond them. You and I have talked about that here on the show before of how critically important that depth is. And that's what really separates some of those schools you were just talking about a little bit ago, the Alabamas and the Clemsons, the Ohio States, is it's not just that they've got dudes at the top of the depth chart. It's that they've got dudes two or three levels down the depth chart. Right. Um, and so how how critically important are those reps for the younger guys, how critically important is kind of what you were talking about, about the the older guys pouring into them, bringing them along to help fill out that depth chart? Um, it's very important. Uh, we learned we learned when I was in college, you're always one play away, which meaning in any play could be, if you're a backup, the guy in front of you get hurt at any time. The guy, uh, equipment malfunction may happen. He may need new chin strap. He may need new new shoe strings in his cleats. And when you go in, you don't want to be the weak link or you don't want to be 
the guy who's getting exposed because you're not out there on the field. So the more you know, the more you pay attention and ask questions, um, like I said, that's probably was a thing that, that hurt us a lot in the past on defense because we would have to play guys out of position because other guys wasn't able to step up and fill those roles. So, um, like, a guy who, like Huzzy who could have just, even though even though he had a, a heck of a year playing both nickel and corner, if he could just play corner, it would have been great. But he, right. we had to move him around. After because, the Boykins you know, guy, Yep. Right. So, but if we got guys – Anybody go down, you still got guys who could plug in and come in right behind them and keep it going, man. That's that's all that that's that's a that's a big plus because you don't have to compromise the defense to help one player. If everybody knows knows what to do in their role, you can still go into a full arsenal of a defensive play call sheet and you can uh, make plays and, and stop the opposing offenses, and that's what you need. Okay, well, gang, we know how uh, athletic and capable we believe this defensive backfield to be. Obviously, a lot of it is dependent on the guys in front of them. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a new era with Cedric Gray out the door, which is still wild to think about, and uh, the defensive line taking care of stuff up front too so that those guys in the secondary don't have to cover as long. So, obviously, we got all of these position groups we're going to be talking about all summer long, getting ready and prepared for the upcoming fall. It's going to be great stuff. Now, we've talked quarterbacks. We've talked defensive backs. I just want to ask Cerse about some other general observations he had on Saturday. We're going to follow up a little bit more on Omarion Hampton and other things, and we'll do that coming up in just a minute. Right after I tell you about our brand new sponsor, Yahoo Finance. Hey, wouldn't it be great if you could see all of your investment and retirement accounts in one place? With Yahoo Finance, you can consolidate your views from multiple accounts into one hub and access the expert analysis you need to tend to your entire portfolio with confidence. Legitimately, I used to try to do this all on my own, like I was making my own Excel spreadsheets and stuff like that. It was so much time. It was so much trouble. So a couple of years ago, a friend of mine recommended to me that I switch to today's sponsor, Yahoo Finance. And folks, I have never looked back because it's so great. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or you're just looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance is there to give you all the tools, all the data you need in one place. You can securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other investments. A comprehensive perspective is what sets apart great investors, and that's how Yahoo Finance ensures you have the insights to look at your wealth in its entirety. So for comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination. Again, that's yahoofinance.com. All right, so now we just want to kind of zoom out and take a look at a couple different spots on the field as we're starting to take uh, shape of what the Carolina team is going to look like this season on the football field, really our, our first public look at what these guys are going to do. And so earlier, sir, you mentioned Omarion Hampton uh, and how nice it will be for whomever wins the quarterback job to just be able to turn around and go, here you go, guy. Now go run <laughs> real far in that hole. Right. Um, and Omarion's just going to scoot right through it because he's an absolute dude. What did you see from Omarion on Saturday? Um, his patience. He's explosive through the hole once he once he uh, finds the hole and gets through there. Like I've seen him pull away from a few DBs downfield. Um, but what I was also impressed with was his uh, blitz pickup. Like he made it. He made a couple of nice blitz pickup on uh, blitz linebackers and safeties. Um, so it shows that it shows that he's improved there. I believe um, like as a, as a freshman, he kind of struggled with recognizing blitz pickups and whatnot. So to to see that to see that ground game in that aspect, because you can't always make a play you can, uh, with the ball in your hand. You got to be able to be useful without the ball. And with being able to uh, pick up blitzes and get it, like, whoever's at QB, get him enough time to get the playoff. That's that's a big plus in his arsenal. So I, I would say. I would say little little tidbits like that, like his his patience on finding a hold and exploding through it, and his and his ability to pick up blitzers uh, from the upcoming linebackers and DBs. That was pretty impressive. Yeah, that's next level stuff right there. Right. Well, he's obviously the stalwart of the backfield coming back, but Carolina has lost 
one of their stalwarts of the linebacking room, and that's none other than Cedric Gray. It's going to be weird to not see number 33 out there alongside number 23 when the defense takes the field this year, sir. But Power Eccles is still hanging around. But but what are you seeing uh, in terms of the other half of the linebacking core and who's going to be able to step in where Mr. Gray is gone? Um. Uh, right now, it looks like Amari Campbell. He's a guy who made who made strides last year during the uh, spring when he was an uh, early enrollee. He continued to get better throughout the season. If I'm not mistaken, I think he he got an interception last year during the season with playing time in on defense relieving set. We was up big on a couple opponents, so um, that's good. So his confidence is keep getting better. I see him out there taking more control. I mean, it also helps having a uh, seasoned vet beside him and Power Echoes. That's right. To, uh, to play beside, so that helps. Uh, I just hope he continues to get better. Um, I know Thig, Thig always find find them diving in the roughs, man. <laughs> he's because Thig been known to find find them um, yeah, rock in the hard place, man. He, he sure did. He sure did with Avari. So um, him and uh, Caleb Lavalley look good as well. But I, I think when it all comes down come down to it, I think Amari Am- 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 will will win that job next to Power Eccles. Do you expect, and I, I, this is just total conjecture at this point, but I mean, Carolina these last couple of years has relied so heavily on who their two dudes are at the linebacking core, you know, last year, just really power in Cedric. And it's been those two guys. Do you think it will continue to be that level? Or do you think as the depth continues to grow, we will see more of a rotation in the linebacking core? Um, I would hope we see more, especially uh, with guys playing more so on special teams and whatnot. Uh, we would need to get more guys in there to get playing experiences, especially with the way the rules are now and targeted penalties and whatever can happen. If you, if you know, one of your one of our guys go to make a routine tackle and this and this rule that's targeted gets thrown, that's from right. The game, that's right, right. Get ejected. Then we got to have somebody that's able to step in and play right behind them. So that's where the extra reps come in. And then those guys, like I said, those guys were smart. I'd be taking as much notes from Power Eccles as I can because he's a guy who's who's seen a lot and done a lot in the, in the past two, three years playing linebacker. So I would be I would be in this ear just just to know. I mean, like I said, you always want to play away no matter what it is. So just just being being the constant, uh, we call it being a pro, so that you you carry yourself as much and you're always ready just in case your number calls. So. I will, I will, I will hope to see more depth. More depth would would help us go a long way. Yeah, man, that's good. Well, we'll keep tabs on that, obviously, because that's the goal everywhere is to get all that depth. Uh, lots more conversations to have. Uh, spring game is coming up Saturday, as we know. Reminder, folks, it is not televised. Uh, neither Sirs or I will be there, and so we'll get some information from it on the backside, and be back with you next week to unpack some content from the spring game. And then look, start looking ahead, and, and we'll be with you this summer, just starting to get ready little bits at a time for uh, what is going to be the 2024 Carolina football team. Cannot wait. Is it August yet? Let's get going, man. I'm amped. I'm hyped. Let's get after <laughs> It'll it. It'll be before you know it. That's right. Man, folks, thanks so much for joining us today. Sir, great to have you on. As always, brother, thanks for your time. Uh, folks, Sir is traveling tomorrow, so buddy, safe travels. Get down to Texas in good time. If you are not part of the Locked on Tar Heels Discord community already, we'd love to have you. It's free to join, and the link is in the show notes. If you're not subscribed to the show on audio and video platforms, I don't know why. Now's the time. Wherever you listen to podcasts, just hit subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, just hit that little subscribe button right down there, and it will come up. All right, folks, it's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. I'll be right back with you tomorrow on Thursday. Coach Bill Robinson will be with us. It's going to be great. But until then. Peace. Peace.